Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rory and today I want to talk to you about using the Panasonic Lumix S5 for astrophotography. Now for those of you who've been watching the channel recently, you know that I am a professional videographer. I film weddings, corporate and real estate uh, for money. Uh, but I mean, photography and videography is also my hobby as well. So today I wanted to talk to you about um, how you can use the Panasonic S5 to take amazing astrophotography shots. I live in Tasmania, which is in Southern Australia. So we actually get some like really, really cool clear skies because you don't have a lot of um, cities or towns or anything around us. So we don't have a ton of light pollution. Um, and we're also very, very lucky that we get a lot of auroras, which is the Southern Lights come. So astrophotography has become somewhat of a hobby for me. So I just wanted to run through, this will be a really quick video, just running through the settings that I use, uh, the lens that I use for my astrophotography, as well as a few tips and tricks to get the best out of the camera. Now with any sort of astrophotography, one of the first things that you're gonna need is a decent tripod. Um, you can't get long exposure photography without having a good tripod. Um, the image stabilization in the S5 is good, but it's not that good. So um, I just use, this tripod was I think like 150 bucks from one of the local camera stores. It's not one of the, like the really expensive Manfrotto ones or anything, but I use this for astrophotography, I use it for weddings, I use it for corporate gigs, and it stands up really well. So whatever you do, don't like get the cheapest one you can get. You want it to have a little bit of weight in it because if there's a little bit of wind around, then um, you don't want it to be shaking the camera about. The good thing about these ones is they do have this hook on the bottom. So if there is a little bit of wind, you can kind of hang a heavy bag or something off it and it will uh, provide a little bit of weight there um, just to keep the camera a little bit more steady. Now, um, also obviously a camera is what you need. I use the Panasonic S5 and this video will be specifically around the Panasonic S5, but um, basically a full frame camera is better. Um, than a smaller one because you get a, uh, with a full frame camera, you get a lot more light in, which means you're gonna show up a lot more of these stars and a lot more of the southern light. So yeah, if you can afford a full frame camera, do that. But an APS-C camera will also do a really good job as well. Um, some of you might think that maybe the Panasonic S1R would be a better one because it's a much higher megapixel rate, but in low light, you actually want a lower amount of megapixels because the, the uh, sensor size is the same between the Panasonic S1R and the Panasonic S5, but because there's a lot more pixels on the Panasonic S1R, there's a lot less light hitting per pixel. So the low light performance of really high megapixel cameras isn't as good as the low megapixel cameras. And then finally, you wanna have a good wide angle fast aperture lens. The lens that I use is this 14 millimeter one from Samyang. Um, in some countries they're called Samyang, in some countries they're called Rokinon. Now this is an EF mount lens, so I do need to use the, um, the Sigma adapter for EF to L mount. It's also a fully manual lens, so the autofocus doesn't matter at all. It goes down to F2.8, which is really important in terms of letting in a lot of light. Um, I use this lens not just for astrophotography, but also for landscape photography, as well as real estate uh, work as well. This lens is actually, like it's very cheap for a wide angle lens, but it does have one major problem, and that is it does get a lot of kind of mustache distortion, which for photos is fine. You can easily correct that with the lens profile in Lightroom, but for video, it does take a little bit more work. But yeah, for photos, for astrophotography, I find this lens to be really, really, really good. The main thing to do when you are using a lens for astrophotography is you wanna set your focus to infinity. On, the, on each manual lens where it says that it's infinity, it doesn't necessarily mean that that is where it is. Um, so what I'd recommend to do is take it out during the day and set it to what is actually infinity on the daylight. And you can put like a little whiteout mark across both, both sides of the line there. And then when you're, not, when you're out there at night and those white out marks line up, you know that you are actually set to infinity. Now with my copy of this lens, what it says in, is infinity is actually infinity. So I don't have to worry about that. You also wanna make sure that you set your aperture to 2.8 or the lowest aperture that you can when you're shooting astrophotography. Now, when it comes to the actual camera settings that I use, uh, the first thing that I do is I go into the camera and I turn off the long exposure noise reduction. Now, the long exposure noise reduction is great if you're filming long exposures of things like waterfalls or things in bright daylight. Uh, but at night, sometimes what it can do is it can take what, um, what are stars and it thinks of its noise and it actually deletes them out of the photo. So I prefer to do all my noise reduction in post if I have to do any at all. I found that the S5 is pretty good in terms of uh, you don't get a lot of hot pixels or those little red spots that you find on a lot of astro photos. 
Um, so I don't have to do a lot of post work in terms of noise reduction. Uh, the next thing that I do is I make sure that the camera is set to fully manual mode. Um, uh, if, if it's not set into fully manual mode, then you don't have full control over the uh, ISO, aperture and shutter speed. Um, obviously you can't set the aperture in camera because you're setting it on the lens, but uh, I set the shutter speed to, uh, with the shutter speed, you wanna make sure you adhere to the 500 rule. So the 500 rule is the uh, amount of seconds that you can shoot before you start, start getting star trails. So that means it's the amount of seconds that you can shoot uh, while the stars are still really, really sharp. Um, that, the, that amount of time will vary depending on your focal length. So the wider you are, the longer you can shoot, uh, the, like the shorter focal length that you use, so the, the more punched in you are, uh, that will mean that you can't shoot for as long uh, before the stars start to move within the frame. So the way you, you calculate what that is, is you take 500 and you divide it by the focal length as a full frame. Um, so because I'm using a full frame camera, I can take 500, divide it by 14, and I know that I can shoot for about 35 seconds uh, as a long exposure before I start to get star trails. Now, 35 seconds I find to be way too long for most, in, uh, most of my applications. So normally 15 to 20 seconds is what I aim for. With the ISO, in the past, I found that I wouldn't want to go above 1600 on other cameras, but I've pushed the S5 up to like 6400 and above, and I haven't noticed any additional noise in the photos. So um, you can definitely push the ISO quite far on the S5 without having a ton of noise in the, in the pictures, which is great. So um, yeah, so now what I'll do is I'll show you a few examples of a few photos I've taken at night with the Panasonic S5, and I'll go through the settings that I used for each one. Okay, so we're just going to jump right into Lightroom here. Um, so I've got a few astro photos that I've taken over the time, and um, over here you can see uh, all the information about each photo. Um, I forgot to mention when I was recording the other video that um, it's really important to record these in RAW. Um, if you record in JPEG, then you're going to lose a lot of um, a lot of details in your images. So definitely record in RAW. Um, it'll give you the most flexibility in post. So um, as you can see, this first one here, I um, I actually shot on the uh, Panasonic 24-70, not the 14mm that I said before. Um, this is a photo of my uh, my dad's tiny house that he built with the um, with the Milky Way uh, rising up behind it. So um, obviously, all these photos have gone through a little bit of post work, um, not heaps. This is what it was before, um, and and this is what it is now. So it's um, you can see that there, even though the foreground is quite bright, there is still a lot of detail in these stars. So um, this was taken at um, 20 second exposure at ISO 2000, so it didn't even need to push it that far. And when you zoom right in, you can see that there's there's not a lot of noise, not a lot of noise in this at all. Um, I haven't applied any noise reduction to this photo at all. It's just straight, like the actual noise is straight out of camera. So even down here through like the shadows and everything you there's not a lot of noise given given how dark this scene is so yeah um pretty happy with that photo there uh this next one here this was taken uh with the 14 mil lens um it was a 20 second exposure at iso 3200 um this light here in hobart every saturday night out th there's a museum called mona um, it shoots this light up into the sky every Saturday night. It's, uh, it's an art installation called Spectra. So um, I was driving home from shooting an Aurora one night and uh, this light was going and I thought it was really cool with the, um, with the road running beside it to get a long exposure of a car going past with the light and the bit of light reflecting in the Derwent River. Um, but once again, when you zoom right in, there's, there's not like a ton of noise in here um, given how dark the scene is. So yeah, pretty happy with with this image once again like this was it before um so it, even before like before any processing at all like that image is very very clean so very happy with the um with the panasonic s5 in this situation so these next few were um one of the one of the better southern lights that we've had down here um in recent times this was these are all taken on the same night so um I'll start with this one, which was right at the start of the night. Um, this is a 20 second exposure at ISO 1600. Um, you can see that the sun's actually still setting over here. So 
Um, like this was this was it before. This is pretty much how the scene looked to the naked eye as well. So um, the sun setting over here, and it was such a strong aurora that it was still showing through, even though the sun was setting. A um, little bit of foreground elements. It, um, obviously, there was quite dark to begin with, so bringing those up, we still retain like a lot of detail in those, despite the fact that they were like really, really deep in the shadows. So, yeah, this was a um, this is a very, very strong aurora. This photo, it's um, it's a, a photo that I, I I quite like. So, um, and then moving, this is in the same location. Moving on a little bit later that night, um, once again, twenty second exposure, ISO thirty two hundred. Like the, I know we've got a lot of cloud here, so you can't really see the stars or anything. Unfortunately, the cloud rolled in, but um, yeah, the the amount of like the amount of light that it picked up from these southern lights was insane. So, um, once again, th this is the same night again. I moved location to try to get away from that cloud. Um, twenty second exposure. I actually prefer this photo out of the two of them. Twenty second exposure. ISO five thousand. And like th there is a little bit of noise in there, but like there's so there's so much detail, so many stars in there. So you you can I mean this, even before the processing, like when you zoom right in, look how little amount of noise that there is. This is like a huge amount of zoom in there to to before you even start to see any of the noise. So it's um yeah like it, it you get a really really solid clean image even even at ISO five thousand like that's that's pretty incredible really when you think about it when you compare it to cameras of only a few years ago we're pretty lucky to have this now and yeah finally I mean that that photo is from the same angle of those ones and then uh, this is one that I took of a um, a sunset uh, sorry a, a star scene over a top of this tiny house that I was taking some photos for for their Airbnb listing um, once again the 14 mil lens ISO 4000 20 second exposure I'm not super stoked with the colours coming out of the um out of the tiny house there, but the, those lights were terrible. But um when you look at the actual scene with the like the tree and the and the stars and stuff, that like they they come out with like a huge amount of detail. So I'm really stoked with how the S5 performs as an astro um as an astro camera. I'm gonna keep using it as we go on for um um for a lot more for a lot more astro scenes as well. So. So you guys, there you have it. That's the settings and, and everything that I use for the Panasonic S5 when shooting astrophotography. Um, I hope you guys found that useful. If you did, you certainly don't need to use the same lens that I use. There's a lot of wide angle lenses. You can even use like the kit lens, which is a 20 mil at uh, f3.5. That is, would still be a great astro lens. It's just not quite as fast. So you might need to boost the ISO a little bit more. But yeah, um, the, this is what I use and this is the results that I get from it. So. Yeah, I hope you guys found that useful. If you did, uh, definitely give it a big thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And we'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.